What's going on, fantasy football fans? I'm your host, Hussein the Brain, and you're watching The Couch. Welcome to my Week 8 Waiver Wire Pickups video, a special Halloween edition. Kirk Cousins was the best fantasy quarterback of Week 7 and one of my top DFS picks in the previous video. Texans wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins caught a season low of 50 receiving yards, and DeAndre Hopkins owners, such as myself, we're not happy. And of course, the biggest news of the NFL and in the fantasy world is that Arian Foster will miss the remainder of the season. So I know a lot of you watching are looking for a running back on the waivers. Let's go straight into my week eight waiver wire pickups. These quarterbacks are likely not available in your league, but in some leagues they are. We got Matt Ryan. He has a really, really good matchup going against the Bucks. Ben Roethlisberger is expected to come back this week or next week, more than likely this week. So make sure you pick him up. Ryan Tannehill and the Dolphins are back on track. So Tannehill makes for a great pickup. Eli Manning had a bad game. He's going to be dropped this week, likely. He's a good pickup. I uh, expect for him to have some bounce back performances this week going against the Saints, next week going against the Bucks, and the week after that he's going against the Patriots, one of the best offenses. They score a lot of points, so it could be a shootout. Ryan Mallett pulled the Ryan Mallett yet again and is cut by the Houston Texans. This only increases the value of Brian Hoyer. At least we know he's not going to be benched again for Ryan Mallett all of a sudden. So this increases the value of Hoyer, makes for a good pickup. Also Tyrod Taylor, don't forget about this guy. Don't forget how good he was. He's been out for a couple weeks, but has a bye week to rest and is a good stash if you need a QB2 on your team. Now let's take a look at Blake Bortles. He has a bye week, then a tough matchup and an away game against the Jets. I really like him as a stash. He's going to have some good games when you're uh, deep in the season, deep in the fantasy season and in the fantasy playoffs. So if you can't get him, this is a good guy to trade for. Um, expect his value to go down a little bit as he has a bye week and a tough matchup. So I really like him um, weeks 10 through 17. Also, Ryan Fitzpatrick has been very consistent. He's been very good, a low-end quarterback one, and he's facing the Raiders. Not a terrible matchup right there. If you can get some good pass, some decent pass protection, I expect both Decker and Brandon Marshall to have good games like they usually do. Derek Carr, they're playing the Jets. Not a great pickup for this week, not a great spot start, but a good stash. Derek Carr is still a good a good QB, like I said before, low-end QB1, but more like a high-end QB2. Teddy Bridgewater gets a boost in value, has a good matchup this week, but he's no more than a QB2, uh, a good pickup in dual QB leagues and in deep leagues. We also have Winston, Mariota. Um, keep tabs on the Buccaneers' injuries. They're decimated with injuries. Lewis Murphy's out for the rest of the season, so make sure you keep close tabs on Vincent Jackson and Austin Safarian Jenkins. And in really deep leagues, Kirk Cousins is worth a stash. We have Deshaun Jackson maybe coming back. Reed's going to rest his head from all those concussions he's been getting. We know he's a tight end one. And uh, just so you know, Kirk Cousins is on by, but is definitely worth a stash. Has some good matchups. Uh, this is more of a pickup only in deeper leagues and dual quarterback leagues. For running backs, okay, there's nobody to replace Foster. It's as simple as that. Uh, most of you already know that though. I mean, not one running back is going to just replace him in fantasy. But a ton of these guys are really, really good and not owned in a lot of leagues. And it was really close ranking the top five guys here. Charkandrick West, he's going to be really good. We know how that offense runs. They, they go to the tight end uh, position and they go to the running back position a lot. And uh, Shark West is the RB1 over there for Kansas City. Darren McFadden, a lot of upside here now. He's playing against Seattle, so expect a lot of people to drop uh, Joe Randall and Darren McFadden. Be prepared to swoop him up. Ronnie Hillman is going to definitely be the starter there. He may be more like an RB1, uh, RB1A, and uh, CJ Anderson more like an RB1B, but that's just labels. Hillman's going to likely be the starter. Alfred Blue, really good pickup as well. He's going to be the RB1 for Houston. James Starks, decent pickup as well. Lacey, um, you know, I won't write him off just yet because it's been a bye week. Let's see how he does the next two weeks. But he's been playing terribly. I hate the way he's been running. Uh, I'm just not that high on him and nobody really is. So all he, ha all he has is a name at this point. James Starks is definitely going to get some carries because he's a solid running back. The, the Packers aren't 
just going to run Lacey, uh, put Lacey in there 95% of the snaps. James Starks is definitely getting some carries. And Kyrie Robinson, a sort of a sleeper to some people, not really to others. This guy's really good, and we know C.J. Spiller is irrelevant. Kyrie Robinson is the RB2 for the Saints. And in this matchup this week, they're playing against the Giants. Vegas has the Saints favored to win by a few points, three and a half points, and the over-under is 49. So I see the Saints running the ball a lot. And that's the formula for the Saints. They have great run blocking. They need to run the ball to win the game. So once Ingram is a little bit tired, I mean, they can't run him 500 times this year. So once Ingram's a little bit tired, expect them to put Kyrie Robinson in. And C.J. Spiller is just going to be kind of like the change of pace back, uh, speedy back, not going to be doing too much. As I mentioned before, David Cobb is a good stash. He's coming back from injury. And, uh, you know, not a, not a great chance he's going to be the RB1 in Tennessee, but he does have a decent shot. And he is a running back. See, if I'm going to pick up guys, uh, pick up flyers, uh, take flyers on players, it's going to more than likely be a, a, an RB. There's a ton of flyers to take at wide receiver. But look at your opponent. Your opponent's likely not, oh, I'm so desperate for a wide receiver too. I have no wide receivers. Um, your opponent and, and you are probably likely looking for a running back if any position. So that's why it's worth taking a flyer on RBs rather than, uh, let's say, a wide receiver. Buck Allen hasn't put up great numbers, but there's not a lot of competition in that running, uh, for the RB2 spot on Baltimore. Uh, Talia Farrell's hurt, so he's definitely worth a pickup in 12-man uh, or deeper leagues. And Bradshaw's okay in PPR, and Chris Polk is okay in deep leagues as well. Now, I have a ton of wide receivers. Uh, we know Stephon Diggs is the obvious number one wide receiver to pick up. Deshaun Jackson's on by, returning. Michael Floyd's really good, but Cardinals are going to spread the ball out. They're going to go to the tight end every now and then, sometimes the, in the passing game, sometimes even the running back. They're going to throw to the running back sometimes, and they got three really good wide receivers. Sometimes they even go to Jerron Brown. That's what makes the offense so good. The defense doesn't know uh, who they're going to go to. They usually don't play conservative. They're not afraid to throw the ball down the field or, or rack up points against the opponents. So, uh, you know, Michael Floyd is good, but I'd say no more than a wide receiver four on your team. Marvin Jones is good. Stevie Johnson is being slept on. Now, he's not going to be a great wide receiver. Uh, definitely don't want him as a wide receiver three on your team, but a wide receiver four, he's pretty good there. Devontae Adams, kind of like a flyer, but I mean, if Aaron Rodgers can start playing uh, at a high level again, Devontae Adams is going to be really good. Nate Washington, we just saw that one-hit wonder performance. He was one of the best wide receivers for week seven in fantasy. But if Cecil Shorts is out, I do like Nate Washington. He's, he's really not that bad. And he's definitely worth a flyer, a wide receiver four on your team. You already mentioned Rashad Matthews, Brandon LaFell. You guys know the deal with Tavon Austin. Yeah, I don't like Tavon Austin, but here's the thing. He's better than a lot of players that are on people's fantasy teams. They're holding on to these wide receivers that do nothing, like um, a Vikings wide receiver not named Diggs or, or something, when you can have Tavon Austin, a guy who's going to be involved in the offense somehow. Lance Moore is pretty sneaky. Make sure you keep tabs on Jeremy Macklin to see if he's coming back or not. And, and if he's not, Conley and Wilson make for good pickups. For tight ends, Jordan Reed, Austin Safarian Jenkins, Eric Ebron, and Benjamin Watson are all must pickups. They should be owned in every league. Larry Donnell, pretty good tight end. And if Gates doesn't play, Ladarius Green is a must pickup as well. And Jordan Cameron, not too big of a fan of him, but he doesn't deserve to be on waivers. I think should be owned in just about every league. He's still a tight end one on a decent team. Everyone knows about Richard Rodgers. Kyle Rudolph is sort of like a tight, uh, a TD dependent type of tight end. He's kind of like that red zone guy. He's never going to put up a ton of yards, so he's not that versatile. But he is a good target um, in the red zone. And in deeper formats, we have Jermaine Gresham, Kobe Fleener. Jeff Cumberland is a sneaky start this week. Heath Miller's value, it's boosted quite a bit. Of course, not a great tight end, but with Big Ben coming back, his value's got to go up. And sort of like a keeper league, but a, a really deep league, we have Clive Walford, a rookie tight end for the Oakland Raiders. And if you need a defense this week, here are my top 12 defenses. I think that you can drop the Washington defense if you need to. They have a bye and some tough matchups right after. So uh, the number one defense to pick up and, and own and play this week for sure is the Rams defense. They're not available in most leagues, but 
they are in some. I mean, these defenses are are getting dropped sometimes. It really varies from league to league. They're owned in 95% of leagues, though. Uh, same thing for the Jets. They're owned in most leagues, but, hey, maybe in your league they're available. Falcons defense has a really good matchup. This is a game right here that um, they, can cause, they can cause some turnovers. They have a lot of upside this game. They can get some turnovers, maybe even a pick six, score a touchdown. Uh, the upside is tremendous with the Falcons this week. Cowboys defense is a very sneaky start. You got Greg Hardy, that crazy guy playing over there for the Cowboys, and he's going up against Russell Wilson, the most set quarterback this year. Their offensive pass protection is non-existent, so this is a sleepy start. We expect the Cowboys to lose, but hey, if the Cowboys can get five, six, seven sacks, that's going to be worth a good spot start as a defense and a sneaky start. Vikings are sort of becoming a top 10 defense this year. They have a decent matchup against the Bears. I'm not I'm not a big fan of the Panthers defense going against Andrew Luck, but the upside is tremendous. I think Vegas has them as favorites to win by seven. So it's gonna be a tough game for the Colts and you know expect a couple turnovers, uh, at least a pick or two by Andrew Luck. We also have the Chiefs, the Lions. Um, the Texans are terrible, but for some reason, I do like them this week. You can call me crazy, but I think they're okay. Obviously, I didn't rank them too high, but in deep league, if you can't find a defense, I do like them this week going against the Titans. The Titans haven't scored a bunch of points. Uh, they, they really haven't scored much points since week one, since they played the Bucks, and we all know how teams score on them. The Bengals are a good defense. Um, I really like them only if a Big Ben is not playing. So if Big Ben is not playing, their defense gets a huge boost in value this week as a good start. And it's another sneaky start is the 49ers defense. Vegas has this as the lowest scoring game. Definitely don't uh, vouch for the 49ers defense being great, but they are a sneaky start. And my final defense this week is the Titans defense going against the Texans. That is another sneaky start. We all know the Texans are having a ton of problems, but I don't know how well they're going to be able to contain DeAndre Hopkins, though. For kickers... You got Stefan Guskowski the best kicker, and then comes Brandon McManus, definitely one of the best kickers this this uh, this year, and should be owned in every league if he's available. Man, pick him up. Uh, Blair Walsh, she's he's been looking pretty good, and I think you know that guy Stefan Diggs is just is really a spark plug for that team, and with that guy playing like that, I, I like Blair Walsh. I, I really like him this week too. Josh Lambeau's proven himself as a pretty good kicker. Same thing with Nick Folk. Should definitely be owned in most leagues. Mason Crosby's pretty good. And if you need a kicker in deeper leagues, you have Cairo Santos, Andrew Franks of the Miami Dolphins, Robbie Gould, very good kicker there. Greg Zerline has some accuracy issues, so he gets a little downgrade this week. And Graham Gano, nothing great with him, but he's a decent kicker. Make sure you check the weather on that game to make sure it's not too much wind. For those of you that follow Fantasy Couch on social media, whether it be Twitter, Instagram, or in the comments below on YouTube, and you want your question answered on the next video, make sure you use hashtag AskTheBrain. Let's go to Twitter land and see what question we have this week. Fantasy asks, Lamar is good. Now I have trading power. What do you think of Lamar Hopkins and Reed for Antonio Brown, Devontae Freeman, and Gio Bernard. Now in another tweet, Fantasy mentioned that he was a Foster owner. He lost Foster, so he needs depth at RB. I'd say that DeAndre Hopkins and Antonio Brown are basically a wash, so that's even. Now he's giving up Lamar Miller, really good running back, but he's doing the right thing. Uh, you're doing the right thing there, Fantasy, by selling hot. So you get a good depth right there. Devontae Freeman, obviously going to be a top three running back, at least a top five running back this year. He is elite. So you're getting Freeman and you're adding some depth with Gio Bernard, who could be a flex start uh, for you a lot of weeks. So I would definitely do this trade. It seems like you need depth at running back, and that's going to help you out. The other owner gets DeAndre Hopkins, the best wide receiver as of now in fantasy. So that's a good trade for both teams. I'd make this trade. Now I have a question for you. Vegas has the San Francisco at St. Louis game to be the lowest scoring game this week. I want you guys to predict the final score of the game and who will win. So leave a comment below with the final score and the winner. Also as a tiebreaker, make sure you guys leave the score for what you think it will be at halftime. 
So leave the final score of the winner and also the score at halftime and who will be up at halftime. So leave a comment below and the person who gets the answer uh, the closest will get a free gift pack. So make sure you guys do that and wish you guys good luck. And that about wraps up this video. Make sure you guys subscribe to my VIP waiver wire list so you receive the waivers 12 hours before anybody else does. And by the way, it is free to subscribe. Also, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll be coming out with the weekly DFS NFL picks and also these waiver wire videos every week. I'll see you guys on the next video. As most of you already know, this is Monte Snuggles. He's the official mascot for Fantasy Couch. You can follow him on Instagram at Monte underscore Snuggles. And he's dressed up as Snuggles Vader for Halloween. I wish all of you good luck in fantasy this week. Make sure you guys have a happy, safe Halloween. Peace.